Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, we're back with our next prompt, which is snowman, which is pretty exciting because I've had these two snowmen in these books sort of waiting for this particular prompt and I'm pretty excited that I get to actually play with them. These are books that I've had in my cupboard for I don't know how long. You know, when you go to these craft fairs or you drop into a shop and you pick up these books and you flip through them a few times and you're going to make this and you're going to make that and then they end up in your cupboard. And a few years pass. So when this um, project of Christmas came along, I actually pulled out these two books plus uh, there was another one and a pattern. And I've just sort of been flipping through them again and waiting for the next prompt that I could potentially use them. And Snowman is a great one because there's this cushion in the back here with a little snowman on it. I'll bring it up to the camera. How cute is he? So I just love to have a go at him. And then in this book from Lynette Anderson, uh, there's a snowman in here as well. It's not a very good photo. It's sort of a long shot and then a little angle shot here. So I've actually got two snowmen that I can play with. So what I've done is I've found the pattern in amongst um, the big sheet at the back and I photocopied it down in size because these pieces were a little bit big for my projects. So this is pretty close to the size I need and I can sort of adjust it a little bit. Just ignore the penguin that's peeking through there. But at least this is a bit of a start that I can sort of have a play with. So that's the first one. I'm thinking he is going to be the blue version for my advent calendar um, bunting. So I could probably pop the book away now. The um, details of the books are in the description. Now just take into account that some of these books are a few years old. So if you did decide to go looking for them, you might not find them and you might have to sort of hunt down a second hand copy. So the little snowman in this book is this fellow. And once again, I just shrunk him down a little bit just so that I had a bit of space to do some additional work on the page. He would have fit on my red book, but he would have taken up the whole space. And I really want to bring in my style of lace and, you know, bits and pieces that I do. So I just sort of reduced him. I think both of them were reduced by 85%, if I remember rightly. And I think they'll be pretty close. Okay, so let's let's start playing. How exciting. I'm a bit delayed this week for doing my project with you guys because I've been busy, busy with my business, my Christmas shop. So, um, yeah, I do apologise for those who've been patiently waiting. Now, I'm just grabbing my box of tricks here to see where some paper is, uh, not paper, fabric that I can sort of use. And I think this is just fabric of the colours so that's no good to me there must be pages in my journal here where are you there'd have to be some pre-prepared pre-prepared pages I haven't pinned that in that's my house that wasn't that fun to do the house one okay here we go so that's the right size for the blue. So we might start with this one first and I think I'll get it drawn on to the fabric and then um, from there I can um, start working on the actual design. I wonder if he's too big still. Let's have a look. Oh no, probably don't need those words or maybe they can go elsewhere let's have a look maybe I can get the words in down that side I really like the heart and the stars I got a bit of an idea for that to make that look a little bit different okay so I might just slide that up a little bit I don't think I've got my pen handy or do I 
Oh, yes, I do. I've got one pen, so that's good. So that will work. Luckily enough, the calico I'm using is thin enough that I can actually see my design. Well, enough of the design anyway to get me started. I can always refer to the picture when I'm embroidering to make sure that, you know, I'm in the right spot. I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. I'm going to have a bit of space over here. So maybe those words, oh, they might fit. I can do something over there. Oh, I think that's close enough. Now I might... Um, should have popped a pin in there. Yeah, I better because it'll jiggle around. And I've left my pins in the lounge room. Goodness me. Oh no, I've got my sewing kit here. This should have some pins in it. Oh no, here's a box of pins. Okay, I've been away all weekend. My, um, my dad is still on the family farm and it took a bit of a turn a week or so ago. It was nothing, well, we thought it might be something bad, but it turned out not to be. It was just he hurt some muscles in his back, which then laid him down on the bed. And then from that point, without, um, you know, someone to sort of help him out a little bit, he sort of got quite run down and we started to think something sinister was going on, but it wasn't. He just needed a little extra TLC. So he's back on his feet. So I've been up at the farm for a week and helping Dad out. And he's up and back and back farming. Can't hold back a 74-year-old farmer. They're a different breed. There's no way he's retiring. And then um, in the process of getting him back on his feet, We've sort of, because I had him cornered, if you would say, the doctor who thought there was something really bad going on, he's ordered um, lots of tests. So he's passed everything with flying colours. In, in Australia, the saying would be fit as a melly bull. So there's nothing wrong with him. He does have one more test to do. And just for ease, I'm going to bring him back into Brisbane and do it down here. So in a week or so, I've got to fly back up to the, not fly as in a plane, drive back up to the farm, pick him up, bring him back to Brisbane for a couple of days, do this last test, and then um, release him back to the wild. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit to organise. And of course, as you know, I've got two Christmas shops. So the stock is coming in thick and fast. Some of the corporate type of customers are coming in and starting to think about what they can do um, in the way of decorating their businesses. So we're doing lots of quotes for some decorative pieces that they can sort of hang around their business, garlands and swags and things. So they'll all go away now and talk to the powers of B in their companies and decide whether they've got the budget and want to do the investment into some new Christmas decorations. So we're busy quoting. My, my staff are really good at all that now. So they're pretty much self-sufficient, but it's fun when they sort of give me a call and say, am I on the right track? And what's your thoughts on this? So yeah, I sort of get to have a, a think about it all and it's all very creative. So yeah, and now that the stock is really starting to come in and our shelves are filling back up, we've got more goodies sort of to play with. So, And it's great because I do the orders with my husband um, January, February, March. And then it sort of goes quiet and we sort of don't see the stock until now. So I tend to forget what I've ordered. So it's like I walk through the shop and I see all these goodies on the shelves and I'm like, oh, that's right, I remember that and I remember thinking about that and and it sort of all comes flooding back, all the, the fun things that I thought about back in February. So, yeah, and even some of our orders we place in December and it's really, really odd because we're still selling stock and we're busy in December and here I am 
back at home in my office ordering stock for the next year. It always seems so wrong. But that's the way it works if you want to get things made. The big factories around the world, they sort of are a year ahead of us all. So they're starting to order in raw materials and getting ready for the production of the next the next range, which is obviously the next year. I'm going to fit that down there. So I'm actually going to write that saying because I like it. Snowmen melt your heart. I like how the writing on this is really wonky. So it sort of hides a multitude of stitching sins because the stitching is quite random. So if you're ever worried that your text on something is just not perfect enough, well, actually make it not perfect. And then it doesn't really matter, does it? Oh, it's so good to use these patterns. I don't know if it's because I'm in the Christmas industry that I sort of never quite get around to doing this type of work at Christmas because I'm so busy with work. And then I think, oh, well, one day I'll, I'll get to that piece. And it never happens. So to be, you know, confined and forced into, well, not forced, we're not forced, but you know what I mean, focusing on a project that is Christmas themed with everyone, it's been really good. It's um, pulling out of the cupboard. What am I trying to do here? I can see that stars, don't need to move it. Pulling out of the cupboard all these books and patterns and flipping through them again. And there was two snowmen that I spotted straight away and I'm like, oh, I bet the girls give us that prompt. That'd be a good one. And I'm seeing all these little snowmen pop up on the Facebook page. If you're not um, sure what I'm talking about, it's, the, of course, the Roxy Journal of Stitchery. And the girls have got a Facebook page. So you can see every day there's something popping up and there's nothing better than jumping onto Facebook and the first thing that pops up is all these little stitcheries from people around the world. It's so great to see everyone's work and, oh, just inspiring, isn't it? Okay, so there's another star there. I'm just using this as a bit of a guide too because it's just made for straight embroidery, but I want to have a play with it but at least I don't have to think I've got some pieces in few spots that I can put my twist on and the design is great and I'm happy with that so why not so there okay so there's like a box around these hearts and star okay so let's see if we can get at least a few little marks. And I think too, by working someone else's work for a change, gives you other ideas too. You know, you get so used to doing, like I'm a bit of a seed stitch girl. So I, I do a lot of seed stitch. And um, by having another designer's work to actually embroider for a change, it sort of gives you some new ideas. Like this little border that is around this piece has little X's. And then between it is two, two little stitches. And I really like it. Now, I probably wouldn't have thought to do that. I would have just probably done a running stitch. But I like the effect of that, so I'm going to I'm going to draw it in because it's something different. This must be a little X there, that gap. Can you guys see this? Yes, you can. Good. I've got um, a few appointments this week too, where I'll be sitting and waiting. 
So this will be a good little project to have in my bag. I can just pull it out and stitch away. But pretty much nothing major happening this week. So it'll be good. I'll be able to get back into my craft room. I feel like I've been away from my craft room for about two weeks. I haven't, but I just haven't had a good block of time in here. I've literally raced in, quickly done something. What's happening here? I've lost my way a bit there. No. Uh, quickly done something and then raced back out the door. And um, today everyone will be watching my William Morris series where I have a look at that designer in history and what he did for the textile industry and the wallpaper industry. So I'm making a journal using some digital kits that I got from a couple designers. There's heaps out there, so, you know, you may already have stumbled across some kits. And the journal style is I'm having a go at the flip-flop journal that um, everyone's playing with at the moment. So that's a bit of fun. I think it's about 10 episodes. Um, and then in amongst that, I picked up a bundle of William Morris themed fabric from a patchwork shop in Harvey Bay. And it's just beautiful. And I probably didn't get to use as much as I would have liked to. The bundle barely got nibbled at. So I'd love to do a slow stitch piece with that as well. So I'm hoping this week I can sort of pull that bundle out and have a bit of a play with it. Got a bit of space over here, so maybe I can do something there with some lace or something. I won't draw anything in at the moment. Would it be silly to have a penguin peeking in? Yeah, it would be. <laughs> Crazy. I think that's about it. I might just put these little X's on his tummy. And there's little French knots amongst them. By the looks of it. Yeah, so I'm hoping this week I get a little bit more time in my craft room and create some more slow stitch projects because I don't have anything that I can just quick grab and go and stitch. You know, sometimes I'm sitting out in the um, backyard of the business waiting for a semi-trailer to come with stock and <laughs> to have a slow stitch piece that I can have in my bag and just pull it out and find a nice spot to sit in the sun and do a bit of stitching while I wait for a, a semi-trailer of Christmas stock to come is my idea of fun. So I do need to create a few little projects for myself at the moment. So I might do that this week, focus on fabric and textiles and get a few bits and pieces sorted and then I'll have to start a new series and um, before we know it we'll, we'll be in October. I had planned to make op October my unfinished project month. Go and just find things that I've got unfinished and uh, I do have quite a pile of Rachel, if you're listening, Rachel's digital kits that have been printed and I've been using them over the last few years and there's just so many printed pages in there that I really don't need to go and print anything. So I'm thinking of dragging that box out and just making some bits and pieces in the way of some journals because they'll be handy to have in my Christmas gift box so that when I want to give someone a little parcel it's um I love giving them a little junk journal especially if they're new to journaling just to have some made in a cupboard they don't have to be elaborate just get some started you're sort of giving someone who's never had a junk journal in their life a journal it's often can be quite daunting of where to start and if they see that you've just made something simple out of maybe envelopes or some scraps and then decorated you can sort of get someone started on the journey 
So I'm thinking about grabbing Rachel's box of digital prints and doing a series of, um, what would we call it? Don't print anything extra, use what you've got, Corinne. That type of series. And then before we know it, we'll be into November and I can start thinking about Christmas journals. I'll put some dots for his eyes. Never know where to put their eyes. If they're too close to this, there's nothing there. If they're too close together, they look dodgy, like beady little eyes. I'm going to put a band on his hat. There's nothing on the hat, but I like the idea that I can do something up there. Why not? He's got a flower in his teeth. It's pretty cute. Now there's a, a snowflake everywhere. So I'm just going to draw an outline of a circle. There's no use drawing the full detail of the snowflake. I can guess how that looks when it comes time. And it might not even be a snowflake. I might be able to find some lace that looks like a, a little snowflake and pop that in. I don't know. We will see. So that's my plan for the next few weeks is get some more stitcheries prepped up that I can do and get into my unfinished project section of my craft room. We all have it. We all have these cupboards and um, create some bits and pieces that are potentially good Christmas presents. And then before we know it, we will be into November. And then I want to start on Christmas themed projects, some stitcheries and some journals. Got a few friends that are Christmas nutters and a couple of them I gave them journals the year before last and they love them. So I'm thinking I might make a few extra journals this year that are Christmas themed and gift them at the end of the year. So that's not too bad. That actually doesn't look like it's too far over. But um, yeah, I'm liking that. So I think I've got enough. Oh, I might, might do this little stitchery line down here. Yeah, I think I have enough... Um, Lines marked. And what happens up there? Nothing. So it's just a, an X and an underlining stitch there. Oh, how cute. What a lovely little fella. There is stitching all through here as well. But I've got another idea for the hearts and the stars. I might as well draw that in. fun makes a change using an, another designer's pattern to uh, really enjoying this I think it's because I feel a bit weary at the moment so creatively weary plus weary a lot of traveling it I've been doing so just to be able to sit down and just join in on this project with the design worked out. Yeah, I'm really, I, I think I need a little bit of a break. So this will be really good. All right, so that little man is ready to go. So I'll just pop that all away. Now what I want to do with the heart and the stars is I want to cut out those shapes and have and take them away and have the fabric popping up behind. So I need to, before I get too carried away, I need to have a look at my fabrics and place in behind some pieces that once that's cut away, they will peek through. Now there is a name for this and for the life of me, it escapes me. And 
I first did this project, uh, this style of work with um, the Ann Books um, stitchery where we all made the tags and one of the tags we cut away numerous layers to reveal all sorts of colours of fabrics in behind. So I'm thinking of doing a simpler version of that because I think I had like six layers of fabric and I cut these leaves deeper and deeper and deeper and sort of revealed different fabrics and it was so much fun. So I'm thinking along those lines. So this star will get cut out and in behind will be this, this fabric peeking through. So I might just pin that. Oh, what was the name of that? Someone will know that's watching. Um, no, I, can't, I just can't think of it. It started with A. I might use this fabric up here. Oh, what was the name of that? No, maybe it'll come to me as the... It's not A. Is it A? It's not applique. It was something else. Oh, someone will write it. <laughs> someone will tell me. Okay, so I'm going to pin that there. All right. Now I'll do the star as well. So I need a different fabric. Maybe this. dark one a dark star yeah let's do that so I can slide that piece of fabric there and pin him Okay, so now my background fabrics are pinned in behind all this. So I should be able to now just stitch. So let's have a look at the other elements. I might not make any decisions. This face is a bit wonky there. I might not make any decisions about the snowman embellishing yet. I think I'll work this side first because I really want to know if this idea of mine will actually look look good so let's get this fabric back out of the way I'm making a mess already now I need my container of blue threads and beads and let me just jump up and grab that where is it there it is Hopefully the blue thread is in here with all of our treasures. Of course it is not. Oh goodness me. Oh, it's right here beside me. There's our blue thread. Okay, so I just need to find a needle. And we can start stitching down the outline of that um, heart. All those needles are really small. I don't think I have the manual dexterity to hold them in my fingers at the moment. Is there a better needle? That's pretty good. The darning needle will do. As long as the hole is big enough to take that crochet cotton, which it looks like it would be. Okay. Right. Now we have the tools. We have some scissors. Let's get started. How are we going for time? Heaps of time. Heaps of time. So how will we do this? I'm thinking we'll do, I might need another pin. 
I'll just put another pin there. I don't want that fabric to wiggle. Alright. Let's run maybe a, a small running stitch. Just back from the edge of the heart a little bit. What's on the pattern? Let's, oops, get rid of that. That's our red man. We'll save him for another day. Okay, so yeah, there is a little running stitch around that edge. I think I will do that. And then I'll cut where they actually did like a stem stitch. I'm going to cut on that, that line to reveal the fabric underneath is my theory. But first of all, let's get this little running stitch in. Oh, what's the name of this? You'll be all yelling at the screen. If I had my phone handy, I could jump on Google and Google it. It'll come to me. Well, it won't come to me. You guys will have to tell me. <laughs> okay. Up and around the top of the heart. The smaller the stitch, the easier it is to get around curves. Have I got my little scissors here that are good for snipping? I need a point. On my scissors. Geez, I'm organised, aren't I? I'm just not organised today. It's like I've opened the room, the door to the room, and I've just jumped in and I threw my iPad in the stand. And I knew, um, I think it was Wednesday last week, I actually grabbed those two books and photocopied the pattern and then reduced it. And then I was standing at the printer going, yes, this will be fun. Yes. And that was like Wednesday, Thursday I did that. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get time to film, I don't think, Friday morning. And I didn't because within about three hours of doing that photocopying, I was on the road to up to the farm. We end up having to go a day earlier due to a uh, telehealth appointment. The um, nurses wanted to, I guess, see my father on a telly. Well, they wanted to actually see him in person here in Brisbane. And my parents' farm is three hours away. And I explained to the nurse that to go from Brisbane to my hometown, turn around with dad and come back to Brisbane for a 15-minute little appointment was just not feasible. And he's a farmer, he's got animals to care for, he's, he's busy, busy harvesting. So anyway, they said, oh, we can do a telehealth, you know, connect us to the mobile. Does he have a smartphone? <laughs> no, doesn't have a mobile phone. So my husband and I said, right, we'll just get straight in the car now. We'll drive up and they had it scheduled for 7.30 Friday morning. So... Thursday, I'm photocopying the snowman thinking, oh, maybe I'll get a video Friday morning. And within a few hours of doing the photocopy, I was in the car driving up to the farm. We stayed the night and then the next morning, nice and early, we did this little interview with the nurse. And it was so simple. What's your name? What's your date of birth? Do you have any allergies? Just basic stuff, which I had filled out already on an online um, medical application thing they sent me the week before. But um, I think they just wanted to cite, cite the person and I guess tell them exactly what was all going to happen with the little procedure and yeah, that was it. It took like 11 minutes so I'm so glad I didn't drive up, pick him up, drive him three hours back to Brisbane for an 11-minute consultation, then turn around and drive him back to the farm. 
because his procedure's in two weeks' time. Or well, the test is in two weeks' time. So it's not like it's simple. And even that, I'm going to have to drive up, bring him back, and he'll stay with me for probably two nights in Brisbane just to make sure everything's all right after the procedure. And um, then he can go back to the farm. So a bit of a palaver, but anyway. Okay, oops, nearly cut that thread. So that's the little heart stitched on. I might just keep stitching and we will stitch the little star as well. Then I'll find those scissors and we'll cut out. And I guess if it looks silly, we just retire this piece of fabric to the consolidated section of the class, uh, the classroom, goodness me, the craft room. Those stitches were too big, so I'm just going to redo them. Bandit and Pepper have just come to the garden bed at my window and are fooling around, trashing my plants. I'll be so pleased when I'm out of the puppy stage. Bandit's getting bigger and better, but oh, it's such rough play. The moment Pepper's holding it over him, like... She's coming up to two, and he is six months now. And she's holding it over him, but um, probably in the last week, we've noticed that young Bandit is becoming quite a little man now. So there's going to come a day when Pepper's going to get told, <laughs> and she will no longer be number one. But then again, sometimes the females do hold their own in the pack. We will see. But the play has got quite rough. He's now the same size as her. She's finished growing and he's six months and he's the same. Well, I reckon he is probably a centimetre bigger than Pepper now. And he looks real gangly and lanky and still very much ploddy. You know, when they're very plod, plod, plod with their feet. So he certainly hasn't got his um, full dexterity and size. So there's definitely going to come a day when Bandit says, that's it, I'm the boss now. I'm the male. I'm here to protect you. But at the moment, he's still puppy brain. He's a bit of a sweetie. He's very different to Pepper. She's highly strung, active. She'd be a fantastic working dog on a farm. If a farmer was to look at the two dogs side by side, they'd pick Pepper because she's just ready to go, ready to please. What are we doing next? Can we go here? She'll head off in her own direction quite comfortably where Bandit's like, where are we going, Mum? What are we going to do? He'll sit and watch her. He's much more chilled where she's done 20 laps of the backyard and Bandit's still considering it. <laughs> or he's like, no rush. The day is young where Pepper's like, there could have been a possum walk through the yard. There could be a lizard down in a back corner that I missed. So she's straight away down sniffing and exploring the yard because they're in a... a um, a smaller area of an evening with their beds and things like that. So they're nice and safe. I don't like them roaming at night. Peppa tends to gather green frogs up and take them back to her bed through the night. So I don't like that. The poor frogs. I look out the window to make sure that she's in bed asleep and there was green frogs in there with her. She gathered them up and she was sleeping and there's frogs sitting all over her back on, on a pillow and oh, God. So I decided she had just had to be locked up of an evening. She was hunting. She's a hunter. That's that active brain that I was just talking about. She just doesn't stop. I don't think Bandit could be bothered. He sees bed and he's in. But um, oh, I just did a knot there. And it's come through the other side. 
Oh, bugger. Okay, you see what I've done? It's like I'm being picky, but I've done a knot on the other side of that stitch and it's come through to the front. Now I could leave it, what does it matter? But I'm gonna snip that knot. So now I've just undone all that stitching that I've completed there. Goodness me. But I think if I take that stitch back a little bit, and then re Because I wasn't concentrating on what I was doing, I was yabbering away. Okay. If I just unpick, maybe, yeah, two stitches. And then get my needle in there. Re-thread. It's finicky. Re-thread that. Come on. Oh, come on. I was flying along there. There we go. If I pull that through. Re knot. Yep. Okay, back to where we were. Slight little hiccup. And start again. I'll just come up the bottom side of that little star. Might start here. And then we can snip it away and see what it looks like. Should work. And then what will I do? I will probably do some of the simple embroidery. And then as I sort of work towards that snowman, I'll start thinking about different elements that I can add to him to sort of make him a little bit different. Whether I find some lace or I do some additional stitching, I don't know. Can't be thinking it through all in one hit. I have a friend that um, <clears throat> has purchased a tapestry online. And um, he's mad keen on Harry Potter. Absolutely loves Harry Potter to the point where he's, you know, he's a grown man. But he grew up on Harry Potter and the books and things like that. So he's, he's nuts on Harry and collects a lot of the things now and he um he's found this tapestry online and it's I don't think it's Harry Potter but it sort of gives the illusion that it could be you know the typical not not really Harry but could be Harry and it's a castle on a rock in the distance overlooking um the ocean and everything is very black and grey and misty and I don't, I'm going to undo those stitches. They're a little bit big. Yeah, very grey and misty and a hint of white. And I haven't seen the yarn that's with it, but looking at the photo, there seriously looks like there would be probably 12 different greys and then white and black. So you sort of get the idea of what this tapestry looks like and it's, a pre-printed canvas so he doesn't have to count stitches and you know work it out from a chart which is a blessing but boy this this printed canvas so he'd done I think about seven stitches then he sent me a picture and said look what I'm going to have a go at and I was like wow that's that's a challenge he's never done that type of work before at all he's not a crafting embroiderer or anything he's just spotted it and thought I'm going to have a go at that and it'll be beautiful framed in his in his collection of Harry Potter um, memorabilia.
But oh boy, he has chewed off a huge iceberg. So he's like, oh, you've got any tips? So I was like, well, for a start, undo what you've done because you need to get it into a frame first. So we sort of spoke briefly over Facebook text messaging, just some tips and hints of where to start. So he's off to Bunnings to buy um, um, aluminium, um, you know, when you put a fly screen in your window to stop your flies from coming through and there's screen in there. Well, many, many, many years ago, when I was quite young, I used to work in a little craft shop. I think it was about 1920. And the lady that owned the business was a very good embroiderer and painter. And she used to do a lot of tapestries as well. And you can buy timber frames out there that you can stitch, stitch onto your um, piece. But um, what she would use is she'd get this aluminium frame from a hardware and make it into the size of her piece and then using that rubber that holds the fly screen in position she would um, use the tapestry and then use the rubber to hold it in so you've got a really lightweight strong frame that's easy on your hands to hold i'm looking for my scissors guys bear with me pointy little scissors that I own and why can't there they are so yeah he's off to make this frame to hold his tapestry nice and taut so that he can start and um, then I had a bit of a look on YouTube and I found a couple good little videos for someone who's first starting out doing tapestry so it sort of explains how to start and finish your threads and things like that how to organize your thread so some basic stuff so it was like woo 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 don't you start yet you've got a few things to do before this project because you know what it's like if we don't start him off properly he'll he'll soon tire of it because he's sort of making it harder than he needs to and it's an amazon printed piece and there's not a lot of instructions, as you can imagine. It was pretty cheap. So I'm guessing the yarn is pretty ordinary. So anyway, the long story short of it, he's got to make his frame. And then on Sunday, we're all going to be at a wedding together. So I said to him, pop it in the car. I want to have a, a closer look at it. So I'm even tempted to change out all of the threads because if it's really nasty wool, um, I think I'd rather he invest in some proper wool and then his stitches will sit properly. It'll just look so much better. And his plan is to frame it. So, you know, why not do it properly to start with? I'm chatting away here and I've already done one. So I'm just sort of getting a little entry point in here. And then with my scissors going to that line and snipping out. Has anyone thought of the name of this process? Maybe we do another piece of fabric under it to have a think. And then snip again. We'll see. Let's just get this started. We're coming up to the hour, so I've got about 10 minutes. I want to show you a picture of this tapestry too that he's purchased. I hope he finishes it. Like, oh boy, it's a lot of work, but guys, oh. It's, yeah. He's uh, quite a crafty. He makes a lot of props and things like that. So he's a pretty talented, creative person. So I think he's certainly got the, I guess, dedication to take on a project like that. And he's always looking for something to relax and do of an evening. And he's probably thinking this um, piece will be a good idea, which it will be. It will make him relax. It'll either frustrate him or relax him. We'll see. There you go, guys. There is my cutaway. Re is it reverse cutaway? 
I don't know. Stop thinking about it. So I can now trim back some of this bulk here. And I've got one more. So we're off and racing on our first snowman. So there we go. So you probably noticed too my videos now are Monday to Friday where they were seven days a week. So I'm going to do that for the next couple months because, uh, you know, I'm busy with my business. So I'm just not going to get as much time as I would like. But when I do these sorts of little projects on the side, they might pop up on a weekend. But we'll see how we go. I just don't want to overcommit myself. And once Christmas is done for me and I'm back to the ordering stock stage and not racing all over the countryside, um, it'll, you know, resume back to seven days a week. So I do apologise for anyone who was enjoying a video every day. You were very spoilt. But it's just not realistic. But then again, if I get a quiet time, you might see me seven days a week, but we'll see. So I've got a star to do there as well. Oh, I love it. Okay, I'm going to leave that for a moment. I'm going to quickly find this picture of this tapestry that my friend... Um, I'll just go to his Facebook message. So just bear with me if you're interested. Where is he? Okay. Oh, look at all the notes that I wrote on. You've got to do this and you've got to do that and stop. Don't do anything. There it is. That's the picture. So it looks like it's the Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Um, and they look like boats. I don't know what they are. I'm not into Harry Potter, so it's not my thing. But I think that's from the movie. Maybe it is a proper license. But look at the grey. Oh, my goodness. I'm feeling nervous. And then there's a picture of the, um, that is the printed canvas. Look at that. And that's where he started, right there. It's like, stop, stop. You've got some prep to do. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I feel weak. <laughs> it's at the bottom of the side. I can't even make out what that is. Oh, Nelly. Oh, look at the legend. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Stay tuned. Let's see if he can do it. All right, everyone. I will leave the video there and I'm going to finish this little star off camera and that'll reveal that dark fabric and then I can start thinking about the rest of it. So I will be back in the next video to give you a bit of an update. Okay. Bye for now.